Who has ever heard about the merge queue before? Okay, uh, you, you use the merge queue? No, not yet, okay. So today we're gonna talk about merge queues, but first we'll do a quick history lesson. We'll talk about the evolution of development processes from the last century to today's state of the art, the CI-CD. And we try to answer the question, what's next? What is the next logical step once we achieve CI-CD? My name is Charlie. I'm a software engineer at Mergeify, a um, startup from Toulouse in France. Uh, we create services for developers, uh, including a merge queue. So, let's start with collaborative development. How do we share code? And how do we do it without losing our work? How can we go back to a previous version? This is one of the oldest methods we all know. You probably still does it once in a while, but uh, everyone did it at some point. And this is what a student project looks like. There is a production directory to know what we delivered last. There's a development directory with uh, multiple versions of the same file with a clear commit message in the file name. And there's a copy of each delivery with uh, the date and the version number in the name. And probably this whole di directory is copied on several flash drives. Still looks familiar. And one last for, for a joke I found on, on Reddit. So you might find it funny, but all this method works. At least it works well for a single developer. Once you work in a team, you have to rely on automated tools to handle version co uh, co correctly. So version control systems. In the 70s, Bell Labs, those who built the Unix system, came up with their own version control system called SCCS, that stands for Source Code Control System. It's a simple software that allowed to go back to a previous version of a file. Later, in the 80s, uh, came CVS for Concurrent Version System. It's a client-server software so it allowed developers distributed across the world to work on the same code base. It became really popular, and thanks to CVS, one of the most popular um, web servers was developed. A bunch of developers across the world, thanks to CVS, developed the Apache web server in the 90s. Later, they founded the Apache Software Foundation, a community of developers that supported numerous open source software, including Subversion or SVN. Um, SVN is, a, is an open source alternative of CVS. It's a client server software, and it introduced several great things like uh, commits as true atomic operations. Before that, um, using CVS, an interrupted commit could corrupt the whole code base. And later, in 2005, Linus Torvalds created Git, a uh, distributed uh, version control system vastly adopted in the open source community. This graph shows the, um, the results of the Stack Overflow annual developer survey, and it clearly shows the adoption of Git. Is there anybody here that doesn't use Git? Okay, so everyone use it. I guess we all agree. Uh, what's interesting with Git is a new kind of workflow that emerged from it. And I'm talking about the pull request or the merge request. The pull request is a way to propose a change to a shared code base. And it's a dedicated space to improve that change collaboratively. You can make suggestions, you can comment, you can have a discussion about the code, you can request changes. Um, it, it, it aims to improve the change collaboratively. Um, who doesn't use pull request or merge request here? Okay, so everybody use it. Uh, who's on GitHub? Okay, the majority. And who's on GitLab? <laughs> and something else? Okay, like what? 
Okay, und okay. Okay. So now let's talk about CI/CD. I will very briefly define those uh, those terms. Um, continuous integrations is the action to merge code regularly in a shared repository. It's called integration because we will run uh, several workflows, automated workflows on the code before merging it. We will run the build, the unit test, the static analysis, etc., etc. The goal of the continuous integration is to identify and resolve integration issues early. Continuous deployment is the action to deploy automatically and regularly. The idea behind that is the more you deploy, the faster you get user feedback, so the faster you develop the right software. So where does it come from? Since when did CI/CD become so popular? Probably some developers already did CI/CD in the last century before we could even name it. But I think that CI/CD become more popular thanks to agile practices. Just to remember, Agile Manifesto is a paper written in 2001 by 17 people. Um, this manifesto contains four values and 12 principles that aim to improve how we develop software through collaboration, adaptability, and flexibility. I think that CICD comes from mostly those three uh, pr uh, principles to satisfy the customer through early and continuous delivery of the valuable, sof of valuable software, welcome changing requirements even late in development, and deliver working software frequently. So to be agile is to deliver valuable working software frequently to end users. To do so, we automate um, the delivery process, we write automated tests for the software to work, and uh, we tend to collaborate uh, in order to deliver valuable software. And then comes the shift left. What you see here is a good old V model project lifecycle that maybe some of you uh, know. Um, at that time, a project cycle was a bit long. So it started with the requirements, then the specification and the design from the big picture to the small details. Then the fun part, the implementation. Then the boring part, the different test phases. And finally, the maintenance. Well, agility has the same kind of cycle, but we do it indefinitely, and we try to do it in a month, a week, or less. The shift left is an approach that aims to integrate the testing from the beginning of the development cycle. So this approach is clearly facilitated with collaborative platforms like GitHub or GitLab. The pull request is perfect to uh, include the implementation and the test. Um, it can be reviewed by several people to check that the specifications are correctly implemented. And you can automate most quality gates to run on the code before merging it. Other technologies help the CI/CD to become popular, like the build and automation servers. In 2001, we had Cruise Control. Since 2005, we have Jenkins. And uh, since then, we have lots of uh, build and automation servers, uh, some of them with a free plan. And in 2010 and after, we talked a lot about the cloud, the containers, and the uh, DevOps. Now we have CI/CD services everywhere for every price. Um, we can run our tests on our local machine the same way they will run in the cloud thanks to containers. And we have dedicated people to work on CI/CD. So here's a, a GitHub action. Today, just to show you, today it's really simple to set up a CI/CD pipeline on, on a project. This GitHub action is a short YAML file that anyone could write. You just have to create this file in your code base, near your code, and the test will run on every push on the repository. It's so easy and cheap that any project could have a CI/CD today. So um, as we have seen at the beginning of the presentation, we all started somewhere. 
I'm pretty sure you didn't start your first project using version control system or writing unit tests. That's also my case. Um, during my early career, I had no idea what CI, CD, or version control system were. I just delivered software on flash drives. I didn't feel the need to have complex workflows at the beginning. We were just, just two developers on the team, each of us working on different projects. So once the project was delivered, we just copied the source code on a shared drive. That's the least version control we could do. Eventually, we wrote a small script to automate the copy from our computer to the shared drive. That's peak version control, I guess. At some point, we had to work both on the same project and we decided to use a version control system, so we used uh, Subversion, still pretty popular at the time. And uh, we also heard about agile methodologies, so we started using Kanban or Scrum for bigger projects with a bigger team. And as more and more developers joined the team, we had to automate uh, more workflows, more process, like the deployment. So first, we wrote some in-house scripts that few developers knew how to run. Then we started using Jenkins, so every developer on the team could uh, build and uh, deliver the project with uh, just a form and a button. And at some point, the management decided to migrate our on-premise infrastructure to the cloud. So we discovered tons of AWS services, and it was Christmas just thinking about what we could do with all those. So we started deploying automatically. We started to create some unit tests, some tests to run on our code before every deployment. And there still, there still was a lot of work to do, but the idea is here. Uh, we just had to write a full test suite for our projects, then run it before every deployment, and why not deploy each change automatically to the staging environment. And each step of this journey has the same goal. At each step, we just want to deliver better software. We want to deliver it faster and more frequently to, uh, to our users. Now, now I work in a company that fully implemented the CI CD. Um, each pull request, once merged, is automatically delivered to our production environment. So we, could, uh, we, can, we can deliver several chains every day to our end users. So I bet most of you deliver automatically, but is there anybody here that delivers se several times a day to production? OK, nobody. Um, as the number of changes grows, uh, some new challenges arise. So we'll take an example with a simple website and two developers that want to push changes on this website. The first developer wants to add a new component. So here is the pull request. The code isn't really important. What's important here is that the continuous integration run on the pull request and passed, and the merge button is green. So the pull request can be merged. Let's merge it. The second developer created another pull request to rename a component. So the CI passed also on the pull request, and the merge button is green. But if you merge this pull request, you have a, you have a conflict. You have um, a problem on your main branch, because the component renamed by the second developer is the one used by the first one. If you, mer if you merge this pull request, you'll break your main branch and your website and you might not see the issue immediately. You'll see the issue if, uh, if another developer creates a pull request and can't run the CI, or if you implemented um, continuous delivery and you break your staging environment, or worse, your production environment. So let's see what happened here. The first developer created a pull request from the latest version of the main branch, and at that time, the continuous integration passes on both the pull request and the main branch. The pull request is mergeable, so we can merge it. The second developer created uh, another pull request from the same version of the main branch. 
But in between, the first developer merged its pull request. So the second pull request is now out of date, even though the continuous integration passed on both the pull request and the main branch. If you merge this pull request, you'll break your main branch, and the continuous integration won't pass anymore on the main branch. Um, what you see here is a semantic conflict. That's not a typical code conflict that Git could detect. So Git can detect that kind of, of conflict, and uh, it could happen in several cases. Um, for example, a pull request renames a file or a function, and another pull request uses that file or that function. That's what we have seen in the example just before. Um, a pull request changes a configuration file, but uh, another pull request still expects the old configuration. A uh, pull request removes a, dep a dependency, but another pull request still uses that dependency. Or a pull request changes a CI check, like a uh, linter, and other pull request doesn't conform to that check. This kind of issue can be visible late. Once the semantic conflict is merged on the main branch, uh, the CI won't pass anymore on the main branch, and you can't merge anything uh, before fixing the, um, the problem. So the team has to find the issue and fix the problem in order to continue merging things on the main branch. So let's hope the production doesn't break. Martin Fowler wrote a blog post about semantic conflicts back in uh, 2011. He listed some techniques uh, to avoid semantic conflicts. So write automated tests, uh, make smaller changes, and merge more frequently. So in other words, that's continuous integration. But as we have seen just before, it doesn't solve the issue entirely. Uber uh, has the same kind of issue. So they had a big monorepo with thousands of developers writing pull requests every day from for the same monorepo, and they had a lot of semantic conflicts. They, um, they wrote a paper that, that we will talk about later, uh, but they came to the conclusion that they had to keep their main branch green at any time. So every commit on the main branch has to pass the CI, so you can deliver any commit, you can go back to any previous version, and developers can create a branch from any commit. So how can we achieve that? If you look, the, if you look for, for it on the internet, you'll find several solutions. Um, some say this is just a communication problem between developers. Developers should just communicate about their work. They should just discuss their work in order to find semantic conflicts before they happen. So it sounds good, but it doesn't gu guarantee that you could avoid semantic conflicts like that. Generally, developers aren't good at communication. That's a fact. And most importantly, that doesn't scale. It could work well for a small team that work in the same office, but it cannot work for a bigger team with like five or four developers or more, and it cannot work for um, remote teams. Um, some say you just have to systematically rebase or update your pull request before uh, merging it. So once again, that's a good idea, but if you do so, if you have several developers that write pull requests every day for uh, one repository, you have a kind of race between developers where each developer has to rebase uh, and pass the CI first. And the one that wins the race can merge its pull request. The other have to rebase again, pass the CI again, and uh, you increase your CI cost like so. Some companies implemented a merge lock, so you have to acquire the lock on the repository in order to rebase your pull request, pass the CI, and merge it. During that time, no one is able to acquire the lock, so no one is able to merge anything on the repository. Sounds like a bad idea. And some companies name a release engineer that has to ensure a smooth delivery process. 
So sometimes the release, the release engineer may have to merge pull requests one by one and handle semantic conflicts whenever they happen. But the uh, release engineer may not be the most suitable person for this job. The most suitable person to handle semantic conflicts <laughs> is, the, is the developer that wrote the pull request in the first place. So it would be perfect if we could find semantic conflicts automatically. And after all, the rebase solution isn't so bad. It would be perfect if we could automatically rebase the pull request, pass the CI, merge the pull request, and once the pull request is merged, you do the same process with, with, the, um, with the next pull request. What we create here is a merge queue. So a merge queue, basically, will just, once a pull request is ready for merge, you add it to the queue, and the pull request will, will, uh, will just rebase the, the, uh, the merge queue will just rebase the pull request, pass the CI, and if, and if the CI pass, it will merge the pull request. And once the pull request is merged, it does the same process with the next pull request in the queue. And if the somewhat the CI fails, it notifies the author, it can notify the, the author of the pull request. So the author of the pull request gets a fast feedback and can work on a fix um, right away. So Uber came to the same conclusion and they wrote the paper called Keeping Master Green at Scale. This paper is pretty interesting because a basic merge queue is a bottleneck for a company like uh, Uber. As a merge queue can just merge one pull request at a time. So Uber created an advanced merge queue that is able to check different combinations of pull requests at the same time. Uh, so they can detect semantic conflict faster. And we talk about that at the end uh, of the presentation. That's a really great idea. Just You just have to have infinite resources of CI like Uber. Um, the merge queue from Uber isn't the first one, but this paper uh, really popularized the concept. Uh, later, Airbnb uh, created its own merge queue also. It's called Evergreen, and it's based on Apache Kafka. Shopify also created a merge queue, and this one is available for everyone. They already had a deployment tool called Shipit, um, and they integrated a merge queue in it later. So you can add a pull request to the merge queue uh, thanks to a brand new green button with a Chrome extension or a comment in the GitHub discussion. So as I said at the beginning of the presentation, we also have a merge queue. At the beginning, Mergeify was an automation tool for GitHub that later integrated the merge queue. And this merge queue is uh, also available for public uh, repositories for free. And what about GitLab? Uh, GitLab also has a merge queue, and it's called the Merge Train, uh, and it's available for premium users. And finally, GitHub released a merge queue in July 2023, so a year ago. Uh, they, had to, they had to implement a merge queue for their own monorepo, so they created a merge queue and they made it publicly available. So who needs a merge queue? A merge queue is an advanced tool that doesn't suit every team. You need a merge queue if uh, your team work on the same code base, obviously, if you push a high number of changes, and if you have a robust continuous integration. You don't need a merge queue if you work alone. Um, you <coughs> don't really need a merge queue if it takes days, weeks, or months to create pull requests and merge them. And uh, you can't use a merge queue if you don't have a solid test suite. And if your continuous integration is flaky as hell, a merge queue will be a pain in the neck. A flaky continuous integration is a continuous integration that you have to relaunch several times because it, ca it can fail randomly. Uh, basic merge queue can handle flakiness in the CI, but 
advanced merge queue can offer some solutions today. So since I work at Mergeify, I use uh, merge queue every day. So let's see what the development cycle looks like. So first, you pick a card and you create a branch locally to work on your change. We can run uh, the all, all the tests on our local machine thanks to co containers. Uh, once, the, once the change is implemented and tested, we create a pull request. So the creation of the pull request triggers the continuous integration. Once the continuous integration uh, pass, passes, um, the team is notified that they can review your pull request. Uh, once you get, uh, you, may, you may have some suggestions, so you can, you can make some adjustments on your pull request. And when you have two approvals, the pull request is automatically added to the merge queue. Then the merge queue will try to merge your pull request. So if your pull request is up to date with the main branch, it's, uh, it's merged right away. And if not, the merge queue will create a temporary branch on GitHub to check that the CI pass on your pull request merge with the main branch. And if so, your pull request is merged. When your pull request is merged, it triggers the continuous delivery pipeline, so your change lands to production. Um, that means that if your CI CD takes a few minutes to run, your change can land to production within an hour or less. And if something bad happened in the merge queue, uh, the author of the pull request, so you get a notification that your pull request has been removed from the queue, so you can work on a fix right away. So everything is automated. The integration, the merge, and the de deployment. Your CI is pushed to the limit, and we could eventually name it the continuous merge. Once the developer submits its pull request, it can move on to something else. If something bad happens, he gets a notification, but if everything is fine, he can just focus on something else. And that doesn't stop here. Today, there are more and more bots that create pull requests automatically for our repositories. For example, Dependabot and Renovate are two bots that can create pull requests uh, whenever a dependency, a dependency can be updated on your repository. Those pull requests basically doesn't need approval. So you could merge, th you could merge them automatically with, a, with a, if you have a robust CI or a merge queue. For example, at Mergeify, Dependabot can create up to 10 pull requests every day on our repositories. Once the CI pass on those pull requests, they are automatically added to the queue and they are merged automatically. So eventually, at the end of the day, a developer can look at the pull request that hasn't been merged to see what happened. It could be a regression on the new version, or it could be uh, your code that has to adapt to the new version. So let's see some advanced use cases uh, with some of our users. Orca Security is an Israeli security platform. Um, before using a merge queue, they had a lot of semantic conflicts because they have one big monorepo and they can create up to 50 pull requests per day on that, uh, on that repository. Um, they tried to use the basic merge queue, but with a one hour CI, you can't, you can't merge 50 pull requests in a day with a basic merge queue. So today they use our merge queue from Mergeify. With, um, that allows you to uh, check and merge batches of pull requests. So, for example, when you have three pull requests in the queue, uh, so the batch is ready and the merge queue will create one temporary branch to check the merge of those three pull requests with the main branch. The continuous integration will run on this temporary branch it will run a single time, thus reducing the cost and improving the throughput. So for Orca security, it's, uh, it's batches of 16 pull requests, for example. Similarly, uh, Product Board had to merge 150 pull requests per day 
around 150 provocas per day with a 25 minute CI. So a basic merge queue also can't handle that kind of uh, that kind of number of pull requests. Today they use a combination of batches uh, that we saw just before and speculative checks. Um, the speculative check is the ability to check different combinations of pull requests at the same time. Uber had to implement that kind of feature on their, on their merge queue. It's similar. So for example, when you have three pull requests in the queue, the queue will create three temporary branches with three different combinations of uh, the merge of pull requests with the main branch. If the best combination work, the three pull requests can be merged. But if one or several combinations fail, the merge queue can identify really fast the, problem the problematic pull request and removes it from the queue automatically. Advanced merge queue can also manage the priority. So, for example, in case of emergency, in case of uh, bug on your production, you may uh, want to stop the merge queue in order to patch the main branch. Uh, for example, at Mergeify, we use three levels of priority. One for hotfixes, one for one default priority for most pull requests, and one low priority for bots pull requests. So whenever a pull request is a hotfix and is added to the queue, it gets the first place in the queue, so it's the next pull request to be merged uh, before any other pull request. And for the bots pull request, because it's a low priority pull request, we merge them if there, is, if there isn't any work from uh, developers. And finally, uh, advanced merge queue can, can um, offer a better, a better handling of monorepos. If you have a monorepo with several teams that work on distinct parts of this monorepo, on distinct uh, subrepos, you may want, you don't want one team to slow down the others. So um, an advanced merge queue can offer the possibility to set up one or several queue per subrepo. So each team can, can work at its own pace. And in this case, the first team may have a lot of pull requests to merge, but other teams will merge at their own pace. OK, so time to wrap up. Um, today we talked a lot about CI-CD. It's, uh, it's a practice that is quite recent, but it has become a cornerstone of modern software development. Um, but it's not the end of the story. Software engineer still works on new solutions to improve the development workflow. Um, so today I try to convince you that the merge queue is one of those. But all those innovations have the same goal, it's to deliver uh, software faster and more frequently uh, working software to our end users. So today deployment shouldn't be an event, it should be something trivial. You should deploy multiple times a day without even thinking about it. And merging code should be fully automated, just like integration, test, and deployment. Thank you. So if you have questions, or uh, I'll stay a bit after the conference, so yes. Where do I keep my? The change log? Yes. Um, is it inside the repo as a file or is it inside the repo? Um, we have a public change log for our product, for our SaaS product, and uh, all relies on pull request. So once a pull request is merged, it's a squash. So we squash the commits, we merge them on the trunk, on the main branch, and our change log is automatically, if it's a feature and if it has a, a certain label, uh, we add it to a database for change log automatically with CI, and um, it's refined by the mar marketing team and published on our, uh, on our we website. So everything is based on the pull request, 
and uh, the, the pull request is the atom of the, of the process. Do you know why I was asking you? No. Okay. In my company, all of my robots, all yeah. Once you merge something to the main branch, and the next guy wants to merge something, he instantly will have a conflict. Yeah, there. obviously, so yeah. I'm talking that we uh, build everything with main branch, which is also another source of conflict because you have to store the version number inside the whole XML file. Mm. That is also a conflict. Yeah. Um, as we do continuous delivery, we don't have a version number. It's uh, uh, the the SHA the SHA one, but uh, we also have a change log uh, in the files for the on-premise uh, delivery. And uh, for it, we use uh, Reno. It's a uh, it's a little package to you can create files for each uh, each change. But it's a different file for each feature. <coughs> 